Well, hello there. I've had this thing for a year now. I think it's about time I review my Model Y. Let's dive into it on the next Mix of Tech. Hi guys, welcome to Mix of Tech, where I review technology for the consumer prosumer, and I give my take on the things I see. Tesla's a brand that I trust and respect. It's more than a car company, it's a tech company. And it's a company that continues to improve on its cars and the delivery of its cars. It's the one gripe that I've had in the past with purchasing a car, as as soon as I left the lot, that car really wasn't as capable as it was when I first bought it. And that's why I really enjoy Tesla's. In this video, I plan to go over why I purchased my Model Y, my experience thus far in the year that I've had it, what I've added to my car, what issues I have had, what it's cost me, and some of the stats I think you'll be really interested in to stick to the end of the video. In January of 2020, after saving up for the Model Y, I decided to reserve the Model Y with a dual motor, all wheel drive, long range. That's because of the price point I was willing to pay for it and also because of the range that was offered at the time. My commute in 2019 and early 2020 was an hour to two hours each way back and forth. And so it was important to me to ease my commute so that I could enjoy my ride to work and enjoy getting back to home. So also with a large family, this was the right car for me and I was really excited in early 2020 to reserve it. When I made my reservation, I upgraded my paint to the Tesla Deep Blue Metallic Paint, which at the time was an extra thousand dollars, and I could have gone with a free white, but I really enjoyed the blue. I could have chosen to get full self-driving at $6,000, which I might regret down the road, but with the subscription model and my Cybertruck reservation having it, I think I'll be okay. At the time that I ordered, I was looking at the upgraded silver wheels, and Tesla decided a few months before to change it, so I was able to get the 20-inch induction wheels for no additional cost. So I really enjoyed it and actually looks really good with the blue color. After going through what I thought was a really easy mobile experience for reserving and purchasing my car in January, I got a text two months later saying that my car would be ready in two weeks in the first part of March. To my surprise and many reservation owners, Tesla was over delivering on their commitment to deliver the Model Y. And I was able to get my Model Y on March 22nd of 2020. After going through the purchasing process, I actually got my VIN and saw that it was 570. One of the first Model Ys to be actually produced from the Fremont factory. Keep in mind, this was in the middle of March. As things were starting to shut down around the US, I wasn't sure whether or not I should take delivery on a car. I'm glad that I did because looking a year back, I'm really excited on my purchase. Again, this was pre-factory closure and before Tesla implemented the touch-free delivery, I ended up going to my local service center, signing paper, and with some social distancing, which was a new term for that time period, I was given my cards and then I set up my Tesla mobile app right there in my car. My delivery in 2020 was about what you would expect in 2020. All the Tesla owners I'd seen before really were able to get into dedicated time with their delivery. I know that's changed with the Model 3 and the Model Y, but my experience was pretty quick. I got in and I got out. And so I'll take for what it's worth for in 2020, but I will say I hope that that experience changes once Tesla can reopen and do things in a different manner after 2020. When I took delivery of my car, I definitely went through my car as best I could, and I highly recommend it to any future Tesla owner to do the same. I noticed a few little marks on my car that were due to the delivery residue and that tape, but otherwise, most things were decent. I immediately took my car out and was just so excited. It was roomy, stylish, quick, and full of tech. And at the time, I could not believe it was mine. In the last year, I've done a lot to my car, so let's jump into what I've done. Right after my reservation, I called AP3 and Tion and immediately booked my paint protection and ceramic coating. It wasn't until about April that I was comfortable enough to take it to him just because of everything that was going on, but he did amazing work on my car. I was able to get paint protection on the front of my car, my side pillars, and then on my side mirrors. This was something that was really important to me because I was driving a lot on the highway. After a little bit of time with my car, I ended up going back to Tian and got paint protection around the rear wheel so that I could ensure that rocks wouldn't chip my paint. I had 32% window tint on my front windows to add to the tent look. One of the things I did that I really enjoy with my car is I got it ceramic coated. And this helps to protect the paint, looks really awesome, and it's so much easier to clean. My car was delivered before Tesla offered the tow hitch. And as a cyclist, this was a need for me since I have to have my bike rack so that I can transport my road bikes. Once the tow hitch was an option to add after, I jumped on it. 
as most of the older Model 3 and Model Y owners, I got a screen protector and I got EV wraps for the center console. I also got the Cup Holder Hero Bundle, which allowed me to have different center console accessories and then be able to improve my cup holders. I got the Tasmanian rear trunk cargo mat, the front and the rear trunk mat. I got different front and rear floor mats that were all weather from Bazemore, and I really like them because they fit really well and they look like they belong in my car. The last accessory that I purchased was my TapTest wireless charger to fix my large iPhone charging needs. Check out my video on how I fixed my iPhone charging issues. So like I said earlier, one of the great features about the Teslas is that the software continues to improve. And I've been very fortunate with the software improvements that came to my car in 2020. And releases throughout the year, I got some really cool improvements. I got a dash cam viewer, improved mileage. Who gets mileage added to their car? Only in Teslas. Bluetooth priority, backup camera improvements so I could see the sides, notifications when my windows or doors were open, games, and something that I wish came on my car but didn't was the front speaker because I could have gotten boombox. There are so many improvements, but those were just some of my favorites as a non-FSD owner. So let's talk to the issues, and I know, okay, you can comment below, Tesla isn't perfect, but they weren't too bad for my delivery being one of the early vehicles. I had a scratch on the wood grain on the dash, and I actually didn't notice it when I had my delivery, and thankfully when I came back in April, they took care of it by replacing the entire trim. And I can't believe this, but my back trim for my back seats was coming out, the clips were just not in there securely. Thankfully, Tesla was able to address that pretty quickly. And I've had this throughout, is I've had rattles in my seats and rattles in my door. The rattle of my seats have pretty much been taken care of, but I will say I still have some doors that kind of rattle and I can't figure it out. Tesla's actually had mobile service come out. I've taken it to the Tesla service center. They've gone above and beyond to try to resolve it, but I've noticed the rattles. My car came with a heat pump, but it wasn't included with the insulation. Thankfully, I was able to add that after the fact. I had some pain imperfections, but thanks to AP3, they took care of most of those and there really is only one or two spots that I noticed on my car. And like I said, it's a birthmarks on my car. All right, so this is the last issue that I have as of this year. And this is one that I really hope Tesla makes improvements on because it's for real. The Model 3 and Model Ys have a AC smell that is just not good. And I haven't noticed it until recently because I've been using the heater. But as soon as I turn my AC on, it's like turning your AC on in your house. It has that really bad smell and it gets better over time. But this is just something that Tesla needs to improve on. I haven't taken any actions on it because I've just dealt with it. And it is definitely something you notice once you get into the car. It does get better over a little bit of time as you drive it. But this happened three months after I had my delivery and Tesla really should address this. Okay, for some of you guys, this is probably what you've been waiting for. And this is the cost that I put into my vehicle. So prior to my car arriving, I did have some cost. I went with the Tesla wall charger version two. I got a 60 amp circuit installed and wire run from my basement all the way up to my garage. Now these costs were about $800 to do the insulation and another $500 for the Tesla wall charger. So that totaled around $1,300. So for $1,300, it gave me the convenience of being able to charge at home at decently high speeds. And I will say from my perspective, it hopefully will help with my house value if I ever do sell because I've got a Tesla charger installed. I plan to have Teslas for a while, so this is well worth it, but I was looking at this as an investment that would return within a year based upon the savings I would have with not using gas. So that was the plan in early 2020 was to be able to save on gas so I could pay for my wall charger and then the return was within a year and that was breaking even. Well, that was until I stopped driving to work every day. And so I've only driven 2,500 miles. Getting my PPF, ceramic coating, and window tinting, which I won't disclose the actual cost because it can vary. And I wanna make sure that you look at it with the estimate that's appropriate for who you're working with. My full front paint protection would, would cost you about $1,000 to $2,000. Getting windows tinted can be anywhere from $100 to $200. So ceramic coating, this can really vary depending upon which coating you use. I would say you're anywhere from $350 to thousands of dollars. Mine was probably around 500 to 750 bucks. For the screen protector, I just went with a regular gloss, not with a mat, and that was about 20 to 30 bucks. For an EV wrap and cup holders, that's gonna be around 40 bucks. A tow hitch to be installed after the fact and using the Tesla, which you do pay for the tow hitch and they install it for $1,200. I didn't have a bike rack that I could install on a tow hitch, so I did have to purchase that. And I really enjoyed it. It's my Kuat MV 2.0 bike rack, and that was for $600. 
My TapTest wireless charger was $60, and I will be looking at the fourth generation Jetta wireless charger to compare against that. So look for a video in the future and make sure to subscribe. So in the first year, I didn't have any maintenance costs. From an electricity perspective, I couldn't really see a noticeable change in my bill, mainly because I was at home more often and I wasn't driving. So let's jump into the stats, and thanks to Teslab, I've been able to track the stats since I picked up my car, or pretty close to it, a few days from the delivery. So I did mention this earlier, I only put 2,600 miles in 12 months, and this is based upon me not traveling to work, and I really just walked down to my office in my house. So my trip efficiency was 75.12%, with an average temp around 64 degrees. Distance, I traveled over 2,300 miles that it tracked. Driving time, three days and 13 hours. My average speed, which is true because I wasn't on the highway much, is 27 miles per hour. My median power, which isn't great, was 340 watt hours per mile, which kind of makes sense based upon the driving habits that I had. I would go quickly to the places I want to go, but 341 is not that great. My average fuel cost was $209.94 prior to Tesla app changing it, and then $99.52 after the change. So approximately around $310 I saved on gas. Probably would have had much more savings if I was following my 2019 habits. Now this is just based upon Tesla apps and this is estimated range. I actually tested from charging from 65 to 90% and they've come back with 305 miles. Now I know today I should be able to get 326 and I don't look at this as a degradation on the battery because I haven't really tested this myself. So anything for me, really, honestly, when I purchased the vehicle below 300 miles as an expectation, getting 300 miles is pretty good. Now I've done all my charging at home. I haven't gone to a supercharger, so I know this may not be realistic or relevant to all. So everything is based upon 260 times I've charged at my house. And typically once it's in my house, I put it on the charger. And that's a recommendation that I've had from Tesla. I recommend other Tesla owners. If you got your charger around, even if it doesn't need a charge, just keep it plugged in. It says in the manual. So I may have not gotten the full experience with my car, only driving 2,600 miles, but I've done a lot within 12 months. I hope this was relative to you with the last 12 months being kind of different. I love my car and it's been one of the things that I wanted to keep from 2020. It's fast, tech friendly, and a safe car to drive with my family. I think if you're looking for a Tesla today and you want the most out of your money, the Model Y is the best thing to get. So I wanna know what your thoughts are. You know, is this what you expect after a year with a Model Y? Put your comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button. And if you haven't done so already and want to see really good content like this and other tech reviews, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining A Mix of Tech.